Morning, Janice. Good morning. Today we'll talk about things to do upon the death of a family member. So I understand it's hard to get organized when somebody has died. It's totally understandable. But as a professional executor and as an attorney um, for hundreds and hundreds of cases, you know, I see how like, it's really important to avoid legal and tax problems down the road and, especially, and also family problems down the road by getting organized early. Yes, and this is complicated and you're stressed out at this time. So this is really good information to help you get started when, unfortunately, the time comes. So uh, in summary, today we're going to cover six things you're going to do immediately, seven you're going to do within the first week, two you're going to do after the first month, and then five after you choose a lawyer or a professional executor. So what is that in total? That's uh, 13 plus 2, 15, 20 tips. So oh, well, we, we have a lot of tips. Let's get through these quickly. Yes, yeah? Absolutely. So after all that, lastly, I'm going to share three more power tips. So now we're up to 23 on how even after following these steps, it may not be enough to uh, avoid long-term problems. So we're going to give you those bonus tips to really, really ensure that you avoid those long-term problems. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, you've done this about a hundred, couple hundred times, almost a thousand times for about 20 years. Um, Also have written a book, which is going to be very applicable to what we're talking about today is how probate works. It's really great. It will, it will take you through the process a little more in depth of what we're talking today in our quick podcast. Um, also, you're going to want to join the um, anthonypark.com slash join. It's very easy. Anthony's coming out with a new book soon. Uh, how probate, I'm sorry, how to hire a professional executor early August. And what you're signing up for is just sneak releases of the book, maybe free copies, and to let you know when things are coming out. It's not a newsletter or spam or anything. So definitely want to get on board with that. Cool. Let's get started. All right. So first, we're going to talk about the six things you need to do immediately. Number one, contact family and friends. I mean, that's just, I hope that's a no-brainer. You just got to let everyone know. Yeah. Uh, Right. Absolutely. Um, You're going to want to notify the employer, uh, maybe the physician, maybe they had an attorney already or an accountant. This is going to help you in sorting out some of those initial instructions that you might not have, very little instructions in that. Number three, you want to make sure that you arrange for the care of dependents. What I mean by that is um, if the person who passed away had minor kids uh, or even young adult kids, maybe they're not technically minors, but in their late teens or early 20s, uh, they still might might need um, looking after. They may also have special needs uh, adults who are depending on them or elderly relatives who were relying on them for their help. Just those are top priorities. You got to take care of uh, making sure that... Um, care has been transitioned before you move on to anything else. Yes. And along with care comes pets, caring for the pets. Um, doesn't matter what type of pets, but, you know, in, in different places, you might not be able to get into the home right away. So you're going to want to take those pets, care for them, find a home or do whatever. Um, but definitely important. You can't leave Fido alone for even a day. Cool. Number five, things you need to do immediately. Take care of the body. Uh, so there's certain physics involved where the bodily remains need to be tended to immediately, especially in hot months like the summer. So, you know, just make sure you choose a mortician or a funeral director as soon as reasonably possible. But you need to be mindful of any possible religious or other preferences. If you don't have the actual legal documents yet, you just kind of need to uh, proceed based on what you know, uh, what you know or what you can guess about the person's wishes. Absolutely. Um, and this is a good time to start looking for the will. might not be easily accessible, but you may find it when you're rummaging around in some of their documents. Um, a lot of people have a safe place to put it. You're going to want to start looking for that to find the burial instructions and funeral arrangements. Maybe they had something already in place and paid for. Cool. So those are the things you need to do immediately. Next, we're going to go over the things you should do within the first week or so. All right. So first, you want to make sure that you get enough death certificates. Uh, first, you want to get maybe five, maybe even 10 or more. Uh, the reason for that is getting them now is way easier than ordering yeah. more later. We've been through this many, many times. <laughs> definitely, just, definitely easier. <laughs> they cost, uh, depending on where you are, they cost maybe 10, maybe seven bucks each. It's just way easier to over order and have more than you need than the other way. <laughs> also, you, uh, also, you want to make sure you get it right. Don't let your frazzledness um, lead to an error on the death certificate, like you list them, um, somebody as a widower instead of divorced or something like that. Those things can cause real problems down the road. So just really focus and make sure you get that part, right, those parts, all those, um, all those information fields correct. That's a good point. That is hard to change later. Yes. Um, and uh, unfortunately, you're going to want to play in the service, uh, write an obituary for the paper, or you, this is 
I mean, it's part of it. It has to be done. But this isn't a time to settle any scores or leave anyone out. You, you want to write family members and such as they are. We'll worry about all that later and beneficiaries. And- so that's a, that's a particular problem with blended families um, or, uh, yeah, blended families is the best way of describing it. We've just seen many instances where a second or third wife will decide to not mention kids from prior marriages in the obituary. Okay. Um, a good that- time. That's, you know, petty, obviously, but it also can lead to hard enough feelings that will cause real problems later on. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Absolutely. Next, you want to, and this is, these are the things that you need to do within the first week or so, secure the house. If there's property, you know, make sure it's locked up. Make sure you have keys. Uh, make sure there's no newspaper. Think about this as like home alone. You want to make sure that you're not attracting robbers, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? So right. make sure the lights are going off. Make sure the newspapers aren't uh, piling up. Uh, do a drive-by just to make sure that there's no broken windows or anything like that. And if it's in the winter, you need to winterize. Uh, yeah, this doesn't apply so much in Manhattan, but in the more house-type situations, uh, no, nothing's worse than a busted pipe, a frozen pipe, or um, a roof caving in because of snow, right? Correct, correct. That's in, in the burbs, that's a big thing. It has to be winterized. Um, you're going to want to notify Social, Social Security Administration, maybe the VA, um, Usually the funeral director will do this, but you want to make sure it's done because it's easier now to stop the benefits than it is to try to give them back and figure out how much is owed. It's just way easier to do it right now to stop. Yeah, that's uh, that's something that might lead to accounts being frozen because Social Security realizes after the fact they've been de- direct depositing you know too many payments. So it's just easier to be the first to notify and stop extra payments. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. All right. Next, still on the topic of things to do within the first week, uh, Take a look at medical debts. And what I mean by that is just sort of organizing your head. Was the person who passed away, was he on Medicare or Medicaid? Uh, Did he uh, or she um, benefit or take advantage of a nursing home or rehab or hospice care? And the reason I ask for those three things in particular, I'm going to repeat that, nursing home, rehab, or hospice care, those, amongst other things, are the types of care that might lead to a Medicare lien on the estate. And you're going to need to know that when you speak with the attorney, which we'll get into soon. Absolutely. You're going to want at this point to start a rough inventory. Nothing official, nothing, you know, written out completely. Just start sketching out, even if it's on a piece of paper, just what you're finding that they have, debts, assets. And if you come across it now, it's easier to write it down as we move forward. We can dig into it deeper later, but now's a good time to just start a rough draft. And then the last thing uh, that you need to do within that first week is to take steps to avoid ID theft, identity theft. Uh, the major things would be to cancel a driver's license and to cancel uh, or take control of the email accounts or the social media. And the reason for that is social media, there's just so many predators who do those tricks or those, oh, I'm, I'm what is it? What's one of them? I, I'm stuck traveling abroad. Uh, right, I can only right. contact you through my Facebook account. Please Western Union me a you know, thousand bucks. Yeah. So right, yeah, right. social is really, really ripe for that kind of scam. Yes, uh, unfortunately. Um, so next we'll move into what to do during the first month when you have a little bit more time, things have settled. Um, now it's probably a good time to start looking for a good probate attorney. Um, Find a good one, not necessarily the one who created the estate planning documents. They may not be um, well-versed in carrying out the plans or going through probate because we've talked about this at length. Probate is hard. It is long and will take a long time. So find somebody that's good at it and knows what they're doing. Very good. Next, you need to choose the executor. Now, this might come to a surprise to many of you, but you don't necessarily have to go with the executor named in the will. And sometimes you're not allowed to. For example, if if the person who passed away named their daughter as the executor, but the daughter's not a U.S. citizen and lives abroad, or um, this is a little more unusual, but it happens if maybe there's a felony record on her on her criminal record. Oh, it happened. Or maybe she has a bankruptcy and the court won't allow it for financial responsibility reasons. There's a lot of reasons why the person named in the will uh, may not be allowed to or may not just be the best person just because they have two newborn twins and they're just going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Not it's a, a long time. job. Yeah, it's a long job. It's it's a hard job. So you want to make sure you make the right choice now. Um, it's the kind of thing that's it's worth sitting down and thinking about. So make sure you choose the, the right executor for the situation. And we talk about that in the book. Absolutely. So after you're going to decide who's going to run the estate, the executor, um, you can pay the expenses, but not all of them. This is where you could start doing things that occurred after death. Um, funeral bill, that has to be taken care of right away. Um, 
maybe the lawyer fees, court fees, um, you're going to have to pay when you start the probate process. Um, we talked about the death certificates. That's important to get now. Those are things you're going to want to do at this point. That doesn't mean everything. Don't start paying everything. Don't pay the, the debts and the taxes. Just wait for a minute on that. Um, and the probate attorney can help you on what there's a, there's a hierarchy of how things get paid. So you just so, want to do the thing after death. So I want to make sure that this is clear that these are now we're getting into the area of things that you really shouldn't do until you've chosen an attorney and decided who's going to be the executor. And there's a reason for all that. As you can see, some of these things really require legal advice to make sure you're paying what you're only what you're supposed to pay and and, and so forth. You'll see that as we go on that there's um, a couple more examples. So, yeah, Janice, as you just mentioned, there's a distinction between expenses, which are um Things that you, that that came up after the person passed away versus debts, which are things that came up while the decedent was living, like their f- cable bill or their phone bill. So, those are the things you'll work out with your attorney. Yes, absolutely. Uh, now's a good time to cancel their services, as far as what you were saying: phone bill, TV, internet, uh, credit cards, what else? Uh, utilities, anything that they had running that was that was going that they don't need, they're not using. It should be canceled. And you would want to ask for a final invoice. And you should also probably ask if if things occurred after death. Now, mind you, we're in the first month. So you maybe had half a month where the person was deceased. Ask, say, okay, the time that they weren't living, can we take that off the bill? Most of the time they will work with you sometimes. I mean, it doesn't hurt to ask, but now's a good time to ask for that final invoice and ask. Cool. Next, clean out the house. Now, you might be wondering, why do I wait until I have an attorney or executor for this? Why, do I, why can't I dive into this immediately? And the reason is because uh, you may end up choosing an independent executor, and that will create uh, an independent person to clean out the house. And the reason it's important is because, uh, for example, if your sister was the only one in the house and cleaned it out on her own, and then now some stuff is missing. Right. That's just not a good family uh, situation. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, you don't want to create suspicion or potential resentments, even amongst the best of relationships. You know, me and my brother get along great. But, sure. you know, in a stressful, emotional, grieving time, you know, just sometimes emotions go haywire. You don't want to create or, or uh, create an environment that would make that situation more likely, right? Right. It's because it's only going to make it harder in this whole process that isn't easy anyway. Also, you want an independent you might want an independent person uh, in place for cleaning out the house because there might be spats over personal items and you need some, you might want somebody there to arbitrate that. Um, Also just, yeah, like as I talked about before, if there's, um, we've seen this more than you would expect. If there's cash (laughs) or jewels hidden in the, uh, in the house, you want an independent person with witnesses there when they find them. Otherwise there's just a lot of suspicion or potential suspicion. Right. And as if you hire pros, we do know how to go about uh, the business of photographing or videoing the entire house and sharing those with everyone. So there's sort of like an even playing field. So the you know your brother who's in California who can't fly in for, you know for the clean out feels like at least he's seeing what everyone else is seeing. So that can make everyone feel more involved. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And better in the long run. Definitely better. Uh, then you're going to forward the mail, but wait till you've chosen who the executor will be, because once you decide that, then you'll forward the mail to that person or that company or entity. Um, but you can only do it once. Uh, the post office doesn't like so much when you change it to one, change it to another, and then you're back. So figure it out first and then forward the mail. It's going to make yeah. it easier. It's not that they don't, I mean, yeah, they probably don't like it. They just can't do it for whatever reason. Yeah. We've tried it in the past and it just messes up the mail. So this is one of those instances where you kind of got to get it right the first time. Choose the right executor and only forward that mail once. Absolutely. So what are your three tips above and beyond this to avoid these long-term problems. Okay. Number one, notify everyone. Do not like, err to the side of notifying everyone because anyone who gets snubbed or feels like they got snubbed, um, whether it's in the terms of uh, being in the obituary or on the funeral invitations, uh, that could cause problems down the road. That can create resentments and the feeling like, well, you know what? Maybe I need to sue. <laughs> We've seen it yeah. enough. <laughs> Ouch. I, yeah. So same same deal on the in the funeral arrangements. You don't want to omit anyone on the funeral program or in the obituary. Again, that's that's the kind of thing that seems so petty and, and can lead to a lot of um, dug in positions. And lastly, like we talked about a couple of times, if you have any doubts or if you just want to make sure that your really great relationship with your siblings continues to be a great relationship with your siblings, 
just get somebody independent. It doesn't. It, it, it could be an attorney or a professional executor like, like, like myself, or it could be an independent family member who sort of has an even relationship with everyone, even though that, that's kind of hard to find. For thing, yeah, for things like securing the house and making sure everyone feels like they're on an even playing field because feelings of, you know, who has control or who has more information can really just kind of tear a family apart. And we want to help you avoid that. Absolutely. So we kind of covered a lot of information quickly and a lot at you. So I would definitely recommend taking a look at the book, how probate works. It's going to give you an idea of what you're looking at through this whole process. And it's going to be a little more in debt in depth. Um, available on Amazon. New book coming out. So anthonyspark.com slash join. Um, sign up. Like I said, it's not a solicitation. It's just going to tell you when the books are coming out. Maybe you can land a free copy. Okay. That's it. Thank you, Janice. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you again soon. Bye. Talk soon.